It's alive. Okay, hello booktube. As you can see, I'm not at home today. I'm just really quickly filming this review because I am traveling for two weeks. I'm currently at my brother's house. It's very late at night, so I've got this horrendous lighting set up and I'm trying not to speak too loudly or make too much noise because there are two sleeping toddlers who are turning three on Sunday uh, sleeping at the moment as well as their parents who are also very tired. So, <laughs> real quick book review about The Wrong Way Home by Peter Moore which I've just finished. It's Thursday night and I have to upload my video tomorrow so I'm really cutting it fine. This one and The Long Hitch Home by Jamie Maslin which you can see the full review in last week's video. A little quick compare and contrast a few notes is that with this one, The Wrong Way Home, Peter Moore was not hitchhiking. He was travelling just by a bus and public transports and trains and things, which I found made it a lot more relatable because I'm not a hitchhiker. I find that very uncomfortable. So this was way more relatable. I could, I could, I've never spent like 36 hours on a bus or a train like <laughs> Peter has, but I find that more relatable than thumbing a ride on the side of the highway. I think that Peter Moore might have hitched a ride maybe five times the whole way through. So the idea of the book is that he's travelling overland following the hippie trail from the olden times from London all the way through to Sydney, which is the opposite of the long hitch home where he was hitchhiking from Tasmania all the way to London. So they both went overland and interestingly enough the only place where they couldn't catch a boat or a bus or anything was over a water passage was in between Australia and Indonesia, which I thought was very interesting because they're very closely connected. So just this little area here is quite hard to cross, it seems, by a boat. This book was written in 1999 and the only real like blazingly obvious things that put it in that time frame are that some of the people were getting their photos developed, their film photos developed of their own travels. Another one was he doesn't have a mobile phone or the internet so he had to get a phone calling card and call his mum in the different countries that he was in. Speaking of the different countries he was in, some of the places he went to was absolutely insane. He smuggled, well he kind of smuggled himself, but he got himself across the border into Afghanistan, he went to some war-torn Serbia where like like there are sniper holes in the building that he was in and it just was really really insane and intense but he was kind of just there eating pizza so it was a really weird sort of uh, traveling backpackers view of the world and traveling from one end to the other which was very very interesting to see and from two very different perspectives as well this one was much better this one for me anyway was more relatable I felt a real sense of nostalgia for the places he was going to even though I haven't been to most of them before he made it felt kind of at home it could also be that I have more of an attachment to me to Peter Moore as a writer because he's uh, more in my style and he's Australian and I kind of have read a couple of his books before so I kind of have an affinity with him as a writer anyway. Another fun thing that this book does is that it has a little soundtrack at the beginning of each chapter so it says uh, Bosnia soundtrack Led Zeppelin 5 by Led Zeppelin. It does that for all the different places that he goes to so I thought that was cute. And another time thing is that he has Walkman with cassette. That's pretty cool. So the cassette tapes he actually buys in his journeys of quite a lot of cassette tapes, which is interesting. These books give me such itchy feet to travel. I really, really want to go places. I don't necessarily want to do the same extremely long, tiring, tiring journey. I feel like Peter Moore did his journey in eight months, which is far more doable than what uh, Jamie Maslin did. He did it only in three months and he spent a lot less money as well and he only did it like last year or the year before whereas this guy did it in 1999. Yeah, there weren't any more real age differences I, that I know of in this book. It could have been. It's almost timeless. Well, almost. <laughs> this book is really good. It tells you great descriptions of the characters that he meets along the way and the places that he went to, the beautiful scenery things that he saw and discovered and tasted and smelled and uh, listened to as well. And it just has just enough, just a hint of history of the places that he goes to, just enough to really get me intrigued but not enough to bore me, so that was really good. Uh, Peter Moore is a fantastic storyteller, so I feel like maybe, although things might be a little bit embellished and a little bit more magical and a little bit more whimsical than maybe they were in real life, that maybe maybe he really did do, I mean I'm sure he absolutely 100% did do all of these things, but he just has a better way of retelling his stories. I feel like I got more entranced into his stories than I did with uh, Jamie Maslin. Cool! So. 
this is the book that I've been doing this week. Hopefully I'll get this video up for you on tomorrow, real quick smart. Um, I may or may not have a blog for you on Monday. I mean, I'll film the blog, but it might not get uploaded. Same with next week's video, because I'm going to be filming it and reading it, hopefully filming it, uh, next week. But I will be doing a road trip with my mum back to our uh, well, home country, really, to my old place where I used to live. So I'm not sure when I will get to upload the review because I won't have any internet during that time. So it might not come until the weekend, it might be a day or two late, but I promise you it's coming and that'll be a more romantic book than this one. So that's my travel writing uh, read. My travel writing reading read? <laughs> so that's my travel writing reading read. I think that's all I have to say about it. I mean Peter Moore is absolutely crazy. Some of the things that he did was just insane and you're like why are you doing this and then he writes in the book why did I do this and you're like well yeah exactly it makes for an interesting read I think that Jamie Maslin is a traveler who happens to write about his travels whereas I feel like Peter Moore is a writer and he writes about his travels so he's he's better at writing than he is at traveling okay god I really hope this is recording because otherwise I'm not doing it again not right now I'm too tired oh another thing I really would have liked a map on each chapter so it says where the where they are and then has a little map with the red dot at the beginning of each chapter that would have been really handy because I'm not very good at geography and especially in around the big chunks of between Europe and Asia that I just don't really know about. <laughs> I, I had to google a few things a couple of times, especially uh, even even in the Asia area actually. That well, If it wasn't Europe or Australia I basically had no idea and I thought that was quite appalling and I would have really liked a map there to help me but I googled my way through it because I can because we're in the future now. So really good book. I'd highly recommend it. Peter Moore is a fantastic writer and he just sort of makes it easy to read. You feel f like you're traveling with a friend when you're reading it which is really nice. So that's my book review. Uh, like and subscribe if you like it, and I will see you again next week at some point. <laughs> um, sorry about my vagueness. Hopefully it'll be on Friday, and I will vlog all of my road trip adventures as well. Okay, uh, bye guys. Span out. <laughs>